Hello, hello. So I am back with the mixing of these Birmingham Penco inks that I bought. As you can see, this is quite an elaborate setup here. I had a syringe for each color and I started off using the bottles, which later on I'll tell you that I changed uh, for safety reasons. But as you can see, I was labeling those trays and then I'm also drawing up a bit of a chart here that contains uh, each of the different colors. I had to wash the trays quite a few times and mix them all together. Uh, but the results are really cool, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Okay, so here's all of our experiments done. Uh, what I think I want to do is kind of have a look at these together and see if there's any that we want to explore a little bit further. Some of the mixes were kind of what I expected, but some were a little bit different. So let's see here. So the way this system works is that I did one to one ratio in this column and then a two to one ratio in this column. So this would be one ceramic kiln and, oops, sorry. This would be one ceramic kiln and one Magnolia Mirage. But in this one, it is two ceramic kilns and one Magnolia Mirage. And so all of these are the two ups for each of the different colors. And then this little guy here is using the dilution solution. So I just wanted to try that out. So what I did is I did three drops of the base color plus one drop of the dilution solution. So let's just look at them in a little more detail and see, maybe pick a couple that I want to do a little bit more of uh, a fine tuning on the ratio. Okay, so I had to leave this for a couple of days, but I am back. And uh, these are the ones I've decided I want to do a little bit more exploring. So uh, adding a little bit more of each of the colors in or actually just like one ceramic kiln and then maybe three, six, 12 of the Magnolia Mirage. So I've kind of written up this chart of the ones that I want to explore. Not super professional, but I just wanted to try a couple. So the ones I'm gonna do are Pennsylvania Slate with increasing amounts of Magnolia Mirage and then I want to do one aqueduct with increasing amounts of ceramic kiln and then I want to do ceramic kiln with some more of the abandoned shipyard but also some more increasing amounts of Magnolia Mirage and then the Magnolia Mirage in a smaller quantity with abandoned shipyard, aqueduct and Pennsylvania different amounts. So Let's just have a look at these and see what they turn out like because uh, I'm not really sure if I've got it organized in my brain, but these are the kind of ones that I want to see a little more of a dramatic change and see what we can get, especially with these purples to see if you add more Magnolia Mirage, how is this going? Because this Pennsylvania slate is like a really strong color. So yeah, let's mix those up and see what it's like. So here are our mixes and I'm kind of excited by these purples here. They turned out similar to what I thought was going to happen. So I chose this one here, which is the Pennsylvania Slate plus the Magnolia Mirage. And let me turn it this way so you can see. So it's one Pennsylvania Slate for each of these. And then I added three six and 12 and you can really see that dramatic difference between the six and the 12 there these guys are pretty similar but in the text you can actually see it is a little pinker so i think those are a really nice selection of mixes and just so you can see what i'm talking about these are the two original colors it's kind of easy to forget <laughs> once they shift but so it's one drop of this pennsylvania slate and then three, six, 12 of the Magnolia Mirage. So you're getting a really nice departure from these two and creating a very unique ink. I really love that pinky purple one. And there's still some duo shading in here. You still kind of get that pink highlight up in here. But yeah, really, really nice. And then our other mixes here are the Ceramic Kiln. So let me grab that one. Ceramic kiln plus aqueduct. 
So here are our originals. So this is one aqueduct and three ceramic kiln and we have this beautiful sort of earthy green color and then we're heading more into the safari kind of greens here, a bit more khaki. Yeah, and then we're kind of heading into this sort of mustardy green color. So still quite a departure from the ceramic kiln, nowhere near <laughs> the aqueduct, but the power of the aqueduct color is just really dominating and bringing that into the green. But I really like this one. Look at the haloing on that. It's really nice with the glass dip pen. It's beautiful. So I think this one is a total winner. I really, really like this. These two fairly similar. And actually, if we look across here, which is super weird, this is actually the abandoned shipyard plus the ceramic kiln. So you can see that the abandoned shipyard and aqueduct are both in that green family. And it's really just shifting that ceramic kiln into that territory. So these actually is weirdly enough look quite similar. This one definitely is a little lighter, but you know, not a ton different. So that is super interesting. And then this one here is the Magnolia Mirage plus the abandoned shipyard. So these two, and we're pushing it a little bit, I don't know, into the bluishness in there, but definitely not pink, definitely not that vibrant pink. You can't see anything of that, but see how there's this purple halo here. I think that is kind of influencing this color a little bit, but all these four here are kind of similar in that same family. And that's kind of because we're starting off with, you know, muddy mixed colors to start off with. Um, it's kind of like when you mix all these together, which I actually, I'm going to do. And um, when I was testing all these inks, I uh, sucked up what I could and put them in this little vial here. So this is kind of all of the experiments mixed together. It's not going to be a perfect ratio of all of them, but I totally want to try out that. And I think I will mix one drop of each of them together and see what we get from that too. But anyway, onto these guys here. So this one here is the Ceramic Kiln plus the Magnolia Mirage. And this is three and this is six and there's not a ton of difference between those two. This one is perhaps a little pinker. So just to, for reference, this is the original Magnolia Mirage. And then this is the Ceramic Kiln. So definitely a good mix of these two. I don't know, I think I like this one better maybe, just the three Magnolia Mirage with the Ceramic Kiln. So I think that is a really, really beautiful combo. It's almost into those dusty pink kind of colors, but it's a little bit peachy too. So let's look at this guy here. So this one is the Magnolia Mirage and the Aqueduct. So not a ton of shift here, maybe just a little bit into the more aqua than the green. And then this one I love, which is Pennsylvania Slate. So one Magnolia Mirage and three Pennsylvania Slates. And just that one Magnolia Mirage shifts it right into the blue. So you can see this is a Pennsylvania Slate is kind of a tealish, dark tealish blue. But once you put that one element of the pink in there, it shifts it into this beautiful deep blue. So really interesting, just the color mixing theory of all of this stuff. It's really fun. Uh, and I'm so glad like I have such large quantities of these to be able to make your own custom colors is really great. So I think, I don't think I'm done here yet. I think I want to do the one with one of each of these five colors together. Um, you know, I might leave this one out. I might just do these guys and see what it's like. But I think if we put this one in, it's just gonna be kind of darker and this one is already the green. So I wanna try one experiment with one drop of all three, four of those and I'm gonna see uh, what other ones I can come up with. second round of experiments and what I did is I just added in another factor so um, these ones were just two colors whereas I did three here so you can see they're much muddier but they're actually really yummy I really like them okay so the first one is Magnolia Mirage, Pennsylvania Slate and Ceramic Kiln so all of these three together make kind of a purpley bluish gray which is really nice. I really like that. And then we've got this nice foresty green, which is different to these guys up here with Magnolia, Aqueduct and Kiln. 
and then we have this one which is actually really similar to Pennsylvania Fieldstone let me find that one so this is Pennsylvania Fieldstone so that one is Aqueduct, Kiln and uh, Mirage so that was really interesting and then this one which I really like too is Aqueduct, Kiln and Mirage in the mass tone it's kind of a greeny browny color but then when it's sort of diluted here it's a lot more sort of dark teal so that one's beautiful and then this one is three magnolia six ceramic kiln one pennsylvania slate and one aqueduct so this is all four but in different uh, ratios and then this one i put in more magnolia but it didn't really shift it much it's a little pinker and then this one I added the dilution solution so the dilution solution you're only allowed to add one third of the ratio or one thirty percent which is a little less than one third I guess so what I did is I did three drops of this and one drop of this because if I used two to one it would be 33.333 and more than a third so I just thought it would be easier if, if I did three drops to one drop so you could probably use a little more dilution solution but I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference I mean it looks a little lighter here but I think that's just where I laid it down and I don't know um, even in these tests here these didn't look much different the only one that looked kind of different was this and I feel like maybe I might have just laid down more ink I mean I guess it's got to do something because it's a clear solution so it should be diluting the pigment in these or the the dye in these but I don't know it doesn't it didn't really do much so I actually made a mix of this one here because I really liked it so I made uh, a little vial of it here mixed it up and then I did a three to one ratio with the dilution solution and then I put it in two different, well, two different looking Quebeco pens, but they're both mediums. And I thought that would be a good way just to see it actually in a pen inked up. And there really isn't any change. <laughs> so this one is without the dilution solution and this one is with it. And it really, it really doesn't look any lighter to me. So I'm not... I'm not sure if I'm using it wrong on the site it says you can't use more than a third but I think to get any result you really almost need to use mostly dilution solution and then a little drop of the dye ink so I'm not sure I mean maybe I can try doing that and see what it feels like in a pen I'm not sure that it would ruin your pen at all because it's just colorless solution so it says null colorant pen fluid but they do recommend only to use up to 30% of this but I don't know why that would matter uh, maybe it would fade faster or something I, I don't know but right now I don't really see it being very useful with these colors maybe I'll do some more experiments with different colors I thought maybe the darker ones it would make a, more of a difference but maybe you have to use a very unsaturated ink first off and then you use the dilution solution but I'm guessing they got to that very diluted color by using more solution in the first place so I don't know I'm, I know I'm confusing myself and I'm probably confusing you but right now I don't feel like this dilution solution does much yeah so anyway I think that is all of our crazy mixes oh and then we have this mix here which is the vial I filled up with all the samples that I was mixing so I didn't want to waste all that beautiful ink so I just put it in a little vial and it's actually really nice <laughs> I really like it so that is who knows what the ratio of what color to what is because the Pennsylvania slate and the aqueduct are so dominant and actually there's some shipyard in there as well. I think that's why it's sort of leaning more towards the greenish bluish color rather than the uh, yellowy pinky colors. So I think it's a gorgeous mix. I'll probably never be able to make that again, but you know, these ones are very similar because of that dominant blue and green aspect. So yeah, uh, I think that's all of our mixing done. So I just wanted to say a couple of things that you might want to keep in mind if you're going to mix a bunch of different inks. I really recommend putting them into sample vials rather than directly getting them from the bottle 
because this is a huge amount of ink and if you contaminate it that would suck <laughs> so um, I kind of want to swap these with people and do more mixes and create other things with them so I need to have those as pure as possible so putting them in these little vials it means that at worst case scenario you contaminate one of these and you can test it at the end of your session and compare it to your little swatches to make sure that you didn't and if you did then you would just relabel these but it's easy just to leave the syringes in here while you're mixing and then you don't mix up your syringes and mix up your vials. So this is a really handy little container that I use for ink sampling. And then for getting the extra ink out of here, I was using one of these little pump ones, which make it automated and really easy. You could also do it for these guys here, but it's harder to get one drop out with using these because it's kind of a weird mechanism. And it's nice and smooth when you do it fast, but when you do it slowly, it kind of jumps. So these are much easier for doing that. Uh, and make sure you label your containers before you start. Like I labeled all of these uh, with the dominating color so I knew, and then I had them in order uh, of the bottles. I did start off using the bottles and then I got scared and that's why I put, ended up putting them in, <laughs> in sample vials. Even though I've done a bunch of mixing before, I just kind of forgot. So yeah, do use the sample vials, label your stuff. If you're trying to do something that uh, is based on ratios and you want to kind of have a good reference then you, you need to be a little bit organized which goes completely against my nature um, so <laughs> I had to do all that and make sure that I would keep everything in mind. So hopefully this was a fun little experiment for you guys. I encourage you to mix these inks, they encourage it on their site and you just get a ton of beautiful colors and then you can mix up a little vial for yourself and use them in your fountain pens. I think I'm also going to use these for artwork and just to keep in mind if you're going to create artwork with this it because they're dye based they will fade over time they're not permanent inks so they would be for creations that you're going to scan and make prints out of rather than a finished piece that you're going to sell but yeah they're really interesting with all the chromo shading in there uh, and that breaks apart when you add water to it and stuff so yeah I think this will be really interesting and I have a ton of it too so that's good so I think that's it I will see you guys in the next one bye oh look at my beautiful color stained hands bye